So this is uh, Nendopsis hadiensis I'm currently working with. This is uh, actually this, this one right here. He's about double, nah, probably triple this size by now actually. Um, but you know, I just wanted to show a picture of kind of what he looked like when I selected him as a fish I was gonna grow up. I had him, I had his brother. You know, I, I liked his coloration, I liked his spots. Um, you know, I liked his finish. He didn't have any fin issues. I liked his body shape. Everything about this fish was a good fish. So I decided to continue to grow this fish up. You know, one uh, tip that Ron passed on to me is just show what you like because like I said, it is subjective. So you might go to one show and somebody might not like that fish there that weekend, but the judges are different every time typically. So, you know, I've, I've had it where I've taken the same fish to a bowl show and it doesn't place. Take that same fish to a, like a local regional show and it'll take first in this class, take it to the national show, and it'll take best in the show and vice versa. Either way. So if, what I would recommend is if you like a fish, keep showing it because that's how you're gonna get the most enjoyment is when you finally do break through with that fish that you put all that effort into and that you like very much. Um, typically a lot of my fish, you know, I'll show them for three to four years is kind of that sweet spot. Typically, you know, two to three years old is the typical sweet spot for when I'll start showing them. Um, you know, some of the peacocks and some of the centrals, I'll start showing them a little bit smaller, so like 18 months, but you know, they can show for three, four years. Um, and still be really competitive after about five, six years. What I found is, you know, they start to get a little bit old, look a little bit old. You can still show them, and they still may do okay. You might take a second or third with them, but your chances of winning the best in show at that point are going to be highly diminished. So we're going to go back to transporting show fish. I like to start early in the morning. As we talked about, I use no nets. I only catch the fish using the bag. The more and more you practice it and the more and more you do it, the better you will get at it, I promise. I know it's daunting at first, and it is a daunting task, especially with the larger fish, because then you gotta lift them out. I probably uh, you know, pulled a couple muscles in my stomach lifting some fish out, but no big deal. It's all in the love of it, right? Um, so I've tried transporting them so many ways, I can't even describe them all. But typically, I'll, I'll go with what works for me. If I'm going to like a regional show or like the extravaganza right here, Strong's about 45 minutes away. So that, that, the way I'm gonna transport my fish there is gonna be a little bit different than like if I was to go to Chicago or Cincinnati four or five hours away versus if I was to try to go 12 hours away, it'd be totally different. But typically if you're only going, you know, not too far, within a couple hours, for fish six inches and smaller, I like to use a large 12 by 24 inch bag, um, you know, three mil if available, double bagged, oxygen if you're going out of town, um, you know, uh, you know, try and get a pleated bag so it doesn't have those corners where the fish can get smashed. Uh, fish 6 to 12 inches, a full box bag is required with its own styro, again double bagged. It doesn't have to be a styro, you can put it in some kind of rubber made container, a smaller one. Anything over 12 inches, I would recommend a 20 gallon rubber made roughneck tub. I've experimented with every tub under the sea and that's my go-to, that 20 gallon Rubbermaid Roughneck Tub. It's available at Home Depot for like $12. It's a really good investment. And then a lot of large fish 12 inches and over. If you're going really close, 45 minutes or less, you don't have to put the battery operated aerator on there. If you're going any further than that, I really highly recommend putting a battery operated air, uh, air pump on there. Certain fish like the Nadapsis hadiensis I was showing, I put a battery operated air pump on it regardless just because that fish needs a lot of oxygen. So you get to learn a lot about your fish just by uh, you know, working with them and seeing how they rack. This is a line of care of Jacob Fraber guys, another peacock. Again, this was a fish I selected to, to work with because it had phenomenal color. Uh, this fish, um, you know, did a lot of good things. It won uh, Ohio Sickle Association show one time. It took a reserve best to show at the ACA one time. It's just a really nice, clean fish. There's no flaws. All the uh, coloration is right. Uh, deports very well. So now we're going to talk about our setup of our show fish. So once you've arrived at the show location, you get in touch with the show chair, they're going to show you where you're going to want to set up your fish. Every event is a little bit different. And even though there is the chlorinated water usually on site, it's always best to bring at least some of your own. I've never really had a problem except one time, and it was actually kind of local where I had an issue where they didn't use enough water conditioner. But typically, it really works out well. You know, the fish adapt really well. You know, I've been to Chicago, Cincinnati. You know, um, you know, if I was to go to like a Boston, or like, uh, you know, further out west, then I probably would, you know, leave the Midwest, Texas area. I probably would take all my own water just because by the time you get that far out, the water can be a lot different. Um, 
If allowed, you can bring your own sponge filter. It will help to take the, keep the tank clean throughout the weekend, plus give the fish some kind of familiarity. I don't use my own sponge filters. Um, it just, you know, I've seen it help keep the water a little bit cleaner throughout the weekend, but to me, the uh, work involved for me with all the fish I had kind of outweighs the reward that I would get out of it. But if you're just showing a couple fish, then, uh, you know, that is recommended. You know, I do show some Tanganyikans too. This was a Neil Amperlogus Lulupi that I had, uh, Bulu Point. It was a very fine fish. Um, you know, the problem with a lot of the Tanganyikans is, you know, you put the smaller sponge filter in there and they like to hide a lot. They don't deport very well. A lot of them don't show very good color. So uh, that typically is a problem with Tanganyikans. But again, you know, it's an eye-popping orange fish right there. So the setup, setup of your show fish, if you are electing to use the show's water, check the temperature uh, and make sure you acclimate for at least temperature. Uh, if you have very sensitive fish such as featherfin tanganyikin, it may be best to bring all your own water. Uh, I like to do it where I put my largest fish in the show uh, in first as the trip is usually harder on them than the smaller fish in the tank or in the, in the show. Um, I place them in the tank just as you would catch them at home. It's pretty much the same process, just in reverse. Let the bag float in there, open up the bag, get some water in there, and you want to have the uh, fish facing outward as you kind of slowly let the fish out the bag. Um, so I usually let the water out from the bag, unless it's been a long drive and the fish has fouled the uh, water, then I'll try and drain that water as much as possible and put as little of that in there as possible. This was a Vieja species Cozalacocus, a uh, very nice fish. Again, had very nice coloration. Um, you know, it's another fish that I'm working with. This fish started out in a 40 gallon breeder. You know, it grew to about 10 inches. He got moved over to a 75. Uh, this fish, I actually retired here recently. Um, you know, he had a couple fin flaws up in the dorsal that uh, just kind of kept him from ever being a perfect, you know, prime show fish, but he did well at a couple shows. So this is the typical show fish setup. Like I said, I mean, you're going to have rows of tanks along the table. They're all going to have sponge filters in here. I would highly recommend that you bring tops if tops are not provided. Um, yes, go ahead. So yes, different shows have different rules. Um, typically, you know, the preferred largest tank is a 20 gallon high. A lot of shows will let you bring up to a 30 inch tank, 29 gallon, um, you know, largest tank I've ever actually seen anyone bring is a 40 gallon breeder, but anything larger than 30 inches, typically you have to bring your own stand. Um, you know, I would contact the show uh, chair first just to kind of get a good feel of what's going on at that show. Um, a lot of shows where the tanks are provided, a 20 gallon tall is going to be the, high, the largest tank that's going to be provided for it. Um, you know, so if you want to bring a 29, that's great. Um, what I found though is even my really large fish, you know, I've had some Hadeansis that are pushing the uh, 16, 18 inch mark. The difference between a 20 high and 29 for them really isn't that much. Um, so they do okay in a 20 high. Really, if you want to, you need to get some depth if you're really going to try and, um, you know, provide them a larger area. Typically, when I select my size for the tank, uh, for the fish, you want to have a large enough tank where the fish can swim comfortably both ways. It can move up and down comfortably so it can display for the judges. Uh, you don't want to have too, too large of a tank though. You know, some of your smaller fish, like your lamps and stuff, you put them in a tank out and they basically kind of disappear. You can't see the fish. So you kind of want to select the right size tank for your fish. You know, if you put a large fish in a small tank, it makes it look bigger, but then you still have to make sure they're comfortable. So five and a half for a lot of the uh, old world fish, maybe up to a 10 gallon if it's pushing that seven, eight inch range. Uh, 10 gallon for a lot of the Central Americans. You know, once you get to that, um, past that 10, 11 inch range, 20 gallon high is appropriate. Um, and again, it just depends on the kind of show you're going to. Is it's gonna be a whole weekend affair or something like that. Uh, this was a Therichthys Mikai that I was showing for a long time. It's a really nice fish. Uh, this fish I selected for the coloration of the fish. You know, a lot of Mikai, you know, have just a little bit of red maybe up here and they'll get a little bit of tinge of red. Uh, really, this one, his red was starting to come all the way up almost to his eye. He had a little bit of red up here, even over here. Um, the red came up pretty high, almost an inch off the bottom of his uh, body there. It was through and through red all the way. So that's why I selected this fish. Um, you know, but here's the thing. A lot of people will line breed fish to try and get these kind of traits, and that, that could be okay. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have any kind of hybrids or anything like that. Typically hybrids, yeah, you can get some nice color. Um, they're not going to be allowed in the regular fish show classes. Some shows now are starting to do like hybrid only shows, but 
me personally, I'm kind of a purist. I'm kind of old school. You know, I, I like to look for those pure fish that just have the right traits to be a good fish because I'm sure out of the 300 fry that this pair of fire mouth had, there's probably only a couple that really ended up looking like that, and the rest of them were just kind of plain Jane fire mouths. So we'll go back to the uh, setup of the show fish. Again, some shows you have to provide your own tank. Uh, you know, we kind of covered it all already, but you, wanna, you want the tank to be large enough for the fish to be comfortably to turn around, not too big as... Uh, when you judge a uh, fish, if it's in a, a smaller fish in a larger tank, it looks kind of small and it may lose points for size. I've never really seen a judge walk around with a ruler and they're kind of just eyeballing it. So, you know, that it's, it's all appearance. Uh, typically, it's a solid background that contrasts the fish colors, is recommended if allowed. Um, you know, just play around with it. Play around with each individual fish. I've had some blue fish that work well on a blue background. I've also had some blue fish that work best on a black background. You know, there's really not very good lighting in most fish shows. So if you make it too dark and the fish doesn't pop, it'll kind of disappear. And I've had a couple fish, you know, that I kind of have to play around with. I know yellow sometimes can be a good color. Green can be a good color. Um, you know, I've even seen people use tinfoil sometimes. It really just depends on the situation. Uh, the other uh, supplies I like to bring would be towels and a, a fine small net and also a razor blade. Uh, you want to keep your tank clean. Now, typically, you know, the judges are looking at the fish, but if there's a tie, I've heard certain judges tell me that they start looking at the tank, and that's how they will break a tie. So you want to keep your tank looking as nice as you possibly can. Uh, so you bring the towel for that, you bring the fine small net for that, you bring the razor blade to scrape off any water spots. I know you guys, some of you guys watch me do that here and you're like, what the heck are you doing? I'm just following my process. Um, no, typically no chemicals are allowed in the show area. That's just because, you know, any Windex or any glass cleaner, you know, any other chemicals that could get, you know, overspray, get in a, a, a competitor's tank, you know, I've heard stories of sabotage from back in the day. I've never experienced anything like that. There's probably only one person in the room that can pre pretty much tell those stories anymore, and he's over there smiling. So, <laughs> Actually, Don could probably tell those stories, too. <laughs> uh, so this is a cyanochromous fryer I was working on uh, for a while. I actually had this fish in a 20-gallon high, you know, sideways. Typically, I actually just wanted to show this fish just to show I really don't... Um, do anything special. I mean, it's a 20 gallon high, turn sideways. I don't scrape the back or the sides. Um, you know, he'll, he'll pick off of that a little bit. I just scrape the front. Um, you know, there's some poop down here and stuff like that. You know, like I said, about every two weeks, that's what my water change schedule is. And if they need it sooner than that, they'll let you know. They'll foul up the water. You can kind of tell by the way they're acting. So during the show, you want to check on your fish regularly. You want to make sure that the air to your show tank is working properly. This is where the white soft net comes in. You want to remove any debris from the tank. I usually do this twice during the show, once after everyone is put in and once right before judging. Uh, you know, if the fish is pooped or if you had any kind of debris, anything in there. You know, I, I've had pieces of tape or anything, you know, where I'm trying to tape the lids down. So you want to be able to have a way to get that out without damaging your fish. Bring the clean soft towel to wipe away any water spots. You can use a razor blade to help you with that. Um, and like I said, you know, just overall appearance helps with, uh, with your uh, chances of winning the show. Uh, you know, like I said, typically I like to uh, keep all my fish alone. Some of the Alonicara peacocks I'll keep in the group type setting. But this particular male, like I was showing him for a while, and I would pull him out about three months before I would plan to show him and put him in a 20 gallon by himself just to make sure he didn't have any of the fine fin splits or anything like that. This was the show angelfish I was working. Again, I just wanted to show, you know, kind of some of the traits I look for. You look for the pectoral fins to be both the same length, nice and even. You look for all the fins to be developed, very nice in there. You look for the coloration pattern. You know, it was a very nice coloration pattern. This particular fish is kind of hard to see, but it had really nice fin or filaments coming off the tail here, top and bottom and in between. Um, so, you know, it was a very tall fish. It stood out. It was a very nice, nice looking fish. So how show fish are judged? Show fish are typically judged by the speakers at the event or convention. They usually judge fish they're familiar with and use the help of a local club appointed helper. Uh, typically the tools they use are a flashlight, a clipboard, and depending on the situation, a thin transparent rod that's used to move around the, the fish around the tank so they can get a good look at it. Um, so, you know, I've known people that actually walk around their fish room with a flashlight, with a clipboard, 
That way you'll train the fish, you'll get them used to it. I don't go that far as with the clipboard. I, I do use the flashlight method quite a bit though. So that way they're used to it because a lot of fish in your home aquarium, if you just shine a flashlight right on them, they freak out. So you kind of gradually work them into that. You know, you do as much of the training as you can. I mean, we're not talking about training a dog here, but some of the large Central Americans can be like a dog, you know? So, you know, it's really, you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. Uh, the fish are pointed out on a 100 point scale with 20 points awarded for each of the following criteria, size, color, deportment, finish, and condition. We'll talk about each of those criteria in a little bit more detail. This was that same Therichthys Mekai Firemouth. This fish actually won best in show that year at the uh, Akron Show in 2015. It was the appropriate size for the breed standard. It had great, awesome color. The one thing this fish had was awesome deportment. As we talked about, you know, is a fish back here trying to hide or is it up in the corners? No, it's right greeting you at the front of the tank, flaring out, ready to get you. You can train deportment in some fish a little bit better than others. You know, what you do for that, what I typically do for that, you know, feeding time. You know, I know a lot of people say, don't tap on the glass. Well, guess what? That's the way you're going to train deportment. You're going to tap on the glass gently. You're going to get them to train, train them to follow your finger. Then you're going to feed them. Then you're going to tap on the glass a little bit more. I know that it stresses them out just a little bit. But typically, by the time you get them in a single fish setting, you know, and after they get settled in, they, they, they don't respond to it too bad. So just don't go up there and start beating on it. Why are you sleeping? Everybody's seen that movie, right? So this was an Andopsis hediensis. This was a fish I was working with for a while. This was the one I showed in 2015. You know, like I said, after that seven, eight year mark, this fish was probably seven, eight years old. You know, they start to look old. He starts to get the droop in his body. You know, but it was just a fish I enjoyed. So guess what? I still showed it. This is deportment at its best. This was at the uh, 2014 ACA. This was at uh, Amphilophus hogeboomer that I talked about. Won the Tank Buster Award. Obviously, he's trying to, he's trying to bite the glass here. Uh, there were multiple uh, ladies there that took pictures kissing the fish. They enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, other than color, deportment is something that can win a show outright. I mean, there are certain traits that, you know what, if you got a few fin nicks here and there, if you got outstanding color, the judges will look past that. If you got outstanding deportment, the judges will look past that. So this is Geophagus brasiliensis. This fish is actually in the back of the room right now, so you can go take a look at him after the show here. Um, you know, this fish won uh, ACA. This fish has outstanding color. Not the greatest deportment, uh, not the greatest size. You know, they could grow a little bit more, but just outstanding color for the breed. Astatoheros ritisma, you know, it was a nice fish that I was working with. I just wanted to kind of show, you know, kind of poor deportment. This fish I could never really get to display very well. Kind of always sat on the bottom during shows. Showed pretty good color, but showed kind of poor deportment. It was large enough, but it never really uh, took that next step from a first place class winner to a best in show kind of fish because it never would get off the bottom and deport very well for the judges. This would be a fish that does really well. They deport really well. The whole Amphilophus family, the Red Devils. I think uh, I was looking at the uh, history. I think we've had five or six. Six out of the last 12 extravaganzas have been a Red Devil Amphilophus type when best in show. Six out of the last 12. So that tells you a lot. Deportment and color. This is a uh, Herichthys Pyrrhosai. So after the judging has taken place, they're going to point the fish out. I'm just going to tell you how this works. I was going to put a slide in, but I kind of ran out of time. Um, you know, what they do is the judge looks at all the fish in the class, he points them out individually, um, and he adds up all the points for all, all the five categories. First, second, and third place is determined on which fish has the most points in that category. Um, you know, typically for a first place fish, depending on the class, uh, you know, the New World classes, I, I typically see higher points given than the Central American classes. Uh, typically in the Central American classes, 80 to 90, right around that range, is going to be a first place fish. Typically in the uh, New World classes, 95 and above is typically going to be your uh, first place fish. And it really just depends on what people bring. So then after that, they take all the classes and they pick out, each judge kind of brings a fish to the table out of the two, three classes that they judge that they want to put up for best of show. All the judges then go look at those maybe eight or ten fish that are up, and they all kind of come to a consensus. And I'm sure that anybody in here that has judged a fish show, Lou, Don, can tell you, it can become a heated argument 
on which fish is going to win the show. But they all have to come to a consensus. They come to a final vote. They vote on majority wins, you know, best in show or consensus. It just depends on the show chair's rules. And that's how best in show and reserve best in show is determined. So like I said, you know, the difference between a first in place fish and a best in show fish, I mean, it could be that smallest little fraction of an inch, or it could be just the judges that are there that week. And that's the kind of fish that they like. Um, Herichthys Pearsai, I had this fish for probably five years, showed it quite a bit, uh, took anywhere from third at some extravaganzas, first at other extravaganzas, all the way, I think it took a reserve best of show one time at Akron. So, you know, it just depends. I mean, it depends on, did I transport it there right? Does it look right? Is it deporting right? How's it feel? I mean, certain shows, certain fish kind of just shut off. It just depends on the lighting. Um, you know, so there's a lot of factors that can go, go either way. What I really want to, um, you know, it's really kind of an art, and I, it's, it's kind of a dying art, and I really just encourage anybody who's ever thought about it, you know, dedicate a tank or two, get into it, you know, bring your fish out. I'll answer any question. I don't have, any, I don't have anything that I really keep a secret anymore. Um, you know, I'll tell you guys anything that I look for, anything that I'm doing. There's really no secrets. It's just all about the care of your fish. I know there's some people out there that, uh, you know, they got their hidden Bible somewhere about showing fish, but, uh, you know, those days are kind of gone. It's just something that I'd like to see, uh, you know, come back and people get into. This was that same uh, Coats of Lacocus. This was at a show. You know, he, he did really well. He had really good color, really great fins. Every, every dorsal ray was in place, showed really great color. Um, you know, again, did not deport very well. So... So after the fish show, you know, you've done all that hard work, you know, um, the results are what they are, you know, um, but at that time, don't get discouraged, even if you didn't win, be just as careful bagging and transporting your fish as you were taking them there. It is important to make sure you acclimate your fish when you get home the best way you can. This cuts down on any chance of disease. The most common issues with showing fish are stress, which can lead to ick. Um, you know, stress, cold weather, a lot of fish shows are in the winter time, so try and keep your fish warm. You know, that is one thing. At least, set, you know, try and keep it 70 degrees. That's what I like to do. Uh, and pretty much at that point, enjoy the rest of the show weekend. Look for new and exciting fish that you can grow into future champions. And that's pretty much where you are. So now, you know, we'll talk about uh, some of the people that helped me. Uh, this is Charlie. I don't know, a lot of you guys remember Charlie. Charlie always taught me to be humble. No matter how many fish shows I want, I could always get beat. And I can still always get beat. So just be humble. That was Charlie's, uh, you know, what he passed along to me. Uh, you know, this is a fish I got beat by. This is a good friend of mine's fish. You know, a guy that I showed against a lot as a kid growing up, Bruce Young. A lot of you guys know him. For me, like I said, it's about the competition. So, uh, you know, we go back and forth, and he finally got me. He got me at the uh, OCA Extravaganza. This is an Umbi. It's a spectacular fish. Very large size, really nice color, really good finish. Didn't have the greatest deportment, but it deported pretty well for, the, for what it was. So um, it was in a 29-gallon tank. I mean, this fish is every bit of, you know, 20 inches almost. So this is me and Bruce. You know, this, is, this right here is the goal, for me at least. Get these nice trophies, you know, feel good about what you did over the weekend. Even if it's not the best in show trophy, you can still feel good about what you did. Even if it's just a first, second, or third place, you know, it's a process. Like anything else, you know, the Browns aren't going to win the championship this year. They're going to draft a couple players. They're going to go out. They're going to get a little bit better every year, and it's a process. And that's kind of what I try and tell people. This is what it's all about for me as the next generation. This is my son, Sean Myers. He got him a first place there. That's a great thing. Here's the other one, James Myers. That's what it's all about, teaching a new generation, you know, kind of the art of showing fish. Like I said, it's kind of a dying art, and I'd like to teach as many people as want to learn about it. Um, so special thanks to my wife, my two sons, my dad, my mentor, Ron Georgione, uh, Dean Marcina's helper, supporter Charlie Souk, Ransom Hodge, Jonathan Straziski, and Ray Kingfish Lucas. And uh, that's the end of my talk tonight. All right, does anybody have any questions? All right, go ahead. Yeah, typically um, I keep about eight to 10 peacocks growing up at all times. 
you know, I have three or four that are my main show fish. I have another six to 10 that I'm working with. Um, as they grow, I'll kind of pick out the best ones, weed out the best ones. Um, you know, local fish rooms, local auctions is a really good place to get them. I mean, typically, honestly, a lot of you have probably contributed fish to my, uh, to my collection at one point or another unwittingly through an auction. So um, auctions are really good. You know, your friend's house is really good. And then growing just, you know, if you get a spawn of fish, just growing them out is a really good place as well. Dave? Yeah. Well, it really depends. I mean, typically a pleco is not going to damage the fish. Uh, the fish may damage itself trying to go after the pleco. Like I said, typically I like to leave the algae in there. It gives them another food source to kind of pick off of. I just scrub the fronts of the glass. You know, it just depends on what you like to do. You know, I would, I would be okay with putting a pleco with most of them as they were growing up. But once you kind of got into the prime show fish time, I'd probably remove that just to eliminate any possibility of hurting that fish at all. Does anybody have any other questions for me? I'd be glad to answer them. Go ahead. Typically, it's just me and my dad. Uh, sometimes it's just me. <laughs> it, it, you know, it is a lot of work, but think about it. I'm doing it on a grand scale. I started out showing three, four fish. Then it moved to nine, 10 fish. Then it moved to 15. Then it moved to 20. And now it's a process. Like I said, I can do the 30 fish, get them ready in three hours, get them there, get them set up. So just start with a couple. Start with what you like. Start with what you enjoy. You know, a lot of, like I tell a lot of people, Typically, the best way to get a, a show fish, and Gary Mendez, I'm sure you can uh, attest to this, is you buy that nice pair of fish, you spend all that money, and boom, the male whacks the female. Now, what am I going to do with this male fish? Show the fish. There you go. Instant show fish. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, some people do it. And, and, and that's why you got to find your motivation. Uh, you know, um, there, there's been efforts made in the last few years to try and rectify that. I know I went out to Chicago this year. There's a $500 best in show prize on the line for anybody that wanted to go out there. So, you know, uh, I think there's a $200 for the extravaganza. I mean, all said and done, you know, like I said, different people are going to have different motivations for doing it. Um, you know, my main motivation is competition. I kind of set a goal when I was about 12. Jeff, I think you'll laugh at this. I'm on a 15 and 15 goal. I got to win 15 ACAs and 15 extravaganzas and then I'm done. I'm at three and two right now. So I got a long way to go. But no, I mean, seriously, when I was 12 years old, I set that personal goal for myself and I've been trying to stick to that. You know, I might have to take a couple years off here as the kids start to grow up and do it at a little less of a pace. But, uh, you know, something that I've always enjoyed. And you always, if you have that drive for it, you're going to have that drive. Um, you know, some stuff that we've tried. We've tried to put out a larger prize, you know, with mixed results. So, you know, like I said, if, you're, if you could just bring one or two and see how you like it, you never know. You might, you might get, find something different in the hobby to do. Because once you breed, you know, all the different kinds of fish there are, you know, there's only so much left you could do. Yeah, I think I've I think I've I've gotten pretty close to that. The show I went out to in, in Chicago, I think I I ended up with about 800 all said and done. I did not even win best of show. I took reserve. Uh, ACA doesn't typically pay out cash prizes. Akron does. I mean, at my point, but I'm not. You know, the thing about it is, is I'm not doing it for financial gain. If you're doing it for financial gain, you're kind of doing it for the wrong reasons um, because you're not. There's other ways. There's there's easier ways to make money than showing fish. I'll put it to you like that. Um, you know, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, but no, seriously, um, you know, it is a lot of work. But again, like I said, you'd be surprised the different interactions you get to make meet with and make with people at a fish show when you're a competitor versus just somebody who kind of walks through. I mean, and that, that's what makes it worth it and the competition and knowing that you, you raised the fish to breed standard and it did well. So... My water bill is about $126 a month. My electric bill is about $250 a month. So not incredibly bad. I use two 1 8 horsepower gas blowers to uh, power all my sponge filters. Like I said, I don't jack the heat up very high. I have two glass block windows in my basement that I have these fans that I got off a website, kind of similar to Tractor Supply. Those fans are humidistat fans, but I actually leave them running at all times. I keep a spare. 
Uh, each one has two fans, two small fans in it. It's constantly sucking the moisture out of my room, pulling the warm air from upstairs, downstairs, away from my thermostat, so it kicks on my furnace a little bit more than, than it would otherwise. So I kind of use the furnace to heat what I am going to heat. But again, I don't concern myself too, too much with temperature. A lot of the fish, as long as you acclimate them okay, they'll do pretty well, you know, as long as you don't go too far below that uh, 70 to 72 range. Any other questions? We're at all the way in the back, yep. Live food? Uh, typically, a lot of my fish don't get live food. If they are going to get live food, it's going to be earthworms. Um, I don't do any kind of goldfish or anything like that for obvious reasons, you know, parasite, ick. And then, honestly, I, I've heard other people talk about it up here. You know, feeding your fish uh, a goldfish is like feeding them a Big Mac. You know, there's a lot of fat content. It's not really healthy. Um, if you are going to feed live food, I would uh, recommend you, uh, you know, get your, get your guppies going so you can kind of feed, you know, your guppies. We're a sickly club, so I can say that here without getting too beat up on. Um, but, yeah, get your guppies going. Um, live food... I find that really it's more of a variety of food to help helps out with the color more than necessarily it having to be alive. Any other questions? All right, if not, thank you very much. Nice job, guys. That was outstanding. Raffle is going to be happening.